One of the scariest things about the rise of modern day extremist movements like white supremacists, the Nazi movement in the US and in parts of Europe are the ways that it's reflected in what has come before. And joining us now to talk about this, a director of a fascinating documentary, A Night at the Garden, multiple Oscar nominee, Marshall Curry, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. I'm uh, very for glad me. to have you here. I found your documentary in the Garden absolutely fascinating. And so, for those who might not have seen it yet, could you describe this project and what it is that your documentary reveals? Sure. Uh, so, 80 years ago this month, um, 20,000 Americans gathered in Madison Square Garden for a Nazi rally, um, and the the room was surreal. It was uh, full of American flags. The, the the rally outside was billed as a pro-America rally. There's a huge 30 foot portrait of, of George Washington. But inside, um, uh, George Washington is flanked on either side with swastikas. And when the speaker takes the stage, he begins by attacking the press for lying about him. Uh, then he, uh, he um, attacks Jews, minorities, uh, immigrants. He uh, and a protester runs out on stage and is beaten up. The whole film is only uh, seven minutes long. It's made entirely of archival footage that we that we uh, found. And I want to return to how you uh, assemble this film in just a second. But I do want to say that when you see that image of uh, the backdrop to the stage, the massive George Washington with the swastikas, I, I mean, it definitely feels like Handmaid's Tale or another one of these sorts of like looks back at that time, you know, through the lens of modern parody and all of yeah, that. Man in the High Castle. The man right. in the High Castle, exactly. Like it. If I were to attempt to write this, I could not have come up with better imagery than you were able to find. So how exactly do you go about tracking down original video of this event that the vast majority of Americans have no memory of even happening? Well, it is weird that we don't know it. It seems like this footage should be part of every high schooler's lessons about World War II and the Holocaust. But I was at dinner one night with a friend who was writing a screenplay that takes place in 1939. And he told me about the rally, and I actually didn't believe him. I thought, surely, if this existed, I would know about it. <coughs> um, but I went home and started doing some research, and I discovered that not only was it real, but there were some five-second video clips, that ten-second clips in historical documentaries. And so I knew that if there were ten seconds, there had to be a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got an archival researcher who was a friend to start looking around, and some of it uh, he found in the National Archive. Some of it was in UCLA's archive, Grinberg archive. There were a number of places that had pieces of footage from that night, but nobody had ever gathered it together. And even the National Archive had film that had never been scanned high definition before. Yeah. So. Um, but we gathered it all, and when I when I saw it, I was so. Just I'm very curious as you're assembling this and you're you're cutting down the the video that you have. Um, what sort of feelings are you hoping or expecting to evoke in the audience? And to what extent is what you're revealing in this documentary either intended, either purposefully or even accidentally, to reflect some modern political developments? Well, when I saw it, uh, it was clear to me that there was a there was a relevance to today. I mean, like 1939, right now there are demagogues that are <coughs> taking power all over the world, um, who are taking power by using the same tactics that we see in this in this footage. We see people attack the press, scapegoat minorities, scapegoat um, immigrants, and 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 beat up protesters and um, and that felt like it was important for Americans and people around the world to see what happened when when demagogues did this in 1939, so that maybe they would be a little more uh, wary and a little more vigilant when they see people using these same tactics today. In, in a bit of the B-roll that we just showed there, uh, what you were talking about, the, the protester who was actually attacked, that sort of rushed the stage there. Um, that's that's one of the, the high or low points, depending on how you look at it, of the, the documentary. And I found it amazing that not only is he immediately swarmed and being brutally beaten, um, but, but you have a shot where in the background there's a number of the children. And one child is sort of marching in place and smiling and laughing to himself, which is obviously a horrifying juxtaposition. And, and I'm curious. That protester who was attacked, I mean, do we know anything about this person and their story? What ended up happening to them? Is any of that known? We do. Um, so his name was Isidore Greenbaum. He was a Jewish uh, plumber's assistant from Brooklyn. And he went to the rally that night 
sort of on a whim, not not knowing uh, really what it was going to what what he was going to see, and was so shocked and outraged by what he saw that he felt like he needed to run out and 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 confront what was happening. Um, we've been in touch actually with his grandson, who is understandably very proud of of his grandfather's bravery and taking on. 20,000, a mob of 20,000 people. Um, but the next day, he that night he was beaten up. He was arrested uh, and was charged uh, $25, fined $25 for disturbing the peace. The next day, the newspaper articles reported that the judge told him, don't you realize that someone could have been hurt by what you did out on stage? And he said, don't you realize that someone's going to be hurt from from what was being said on that stage? And of course, this is 1939. In the next few years, millions of Jews and others would be murdered. Um, so he was exactly right to be to be speaking up at that point. And if I remember correctly, this rally happened. I think it was seven months before the invasion of Poland, um, but at the same time, concurrently with the construction of concentration camps and, and things like that. Uh, That's I'm right. also I'm also curious. Just I I always like to find out more after I see a movie that 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 affects me. Um, obviously, you, you cut this down to just uh, about seven minutes or so. Uh, were this to be a feature length documentary, like some of your other work is, um, what else might we have seen? What else happened at that rally? Well, you know, I'm sure a lot happened. We we don't have a ton of footage, um, and and I don't know whether whether all the footage that we found was the totality of what was shot that night, or whether there is a lot more that has just been sort of lost to history, either destroyed or is sitting in a basement somewhere. Um, what I tried to do was cut down something that that you know at its bare bone would would transport the audience into the event. Would show them the, the 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 scale and spectacle of it. Would show them what um, what people were being said, and would also show them the reaction of the crowd, which was the thing that was the most disturbing to me. You mentioned earlier that um, there's a shot where a little boy sort of excitedly rubs his hands and dances as he watches the the protester get beaten up. The regular crowd has similar reactions. You know, you mm-hmm. see. 20,000 Americans, these are people who would be my neighbors. I live in Brooklyn. These would be you know, people in their hats and dresses and suits. And, and they showed up that night to just cheer and laugh and, and be entertained by, um, by someone who was able to, to, to stir up their darker demons. And I think that one of the things that, the, that, that I wanted to show with the film was that we are susceptible as human beings, as Americans, to to demagogues who can push our buttons and and stir up our our you know our our hatred against each other, mm. and um and and we we shouldn't be complacent, assuming that that people will do the right thing. We have to um we have to be vigilant. Yeah, because the last thing we want is for some documentarian in eighty years to. Create a documentary of where where we're at right now, where that goes. Um, right. Marsha Curry, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Night of the Garden, fascinating documentary, and uh, congratulations as well on your your nominations. Thanks so much, and of course, if your audience wants to watch it, it's online, uh, a night at the garden com or lots of other places. They can learn more about the night and they can see the the full seven minute film. And I would certainly suggest that they do. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.